What is the largest lake on Earth? If you remember the last time someone, or more likely some book, made a claim about what Earth's largest lake is, it probably said that it was either Lake Superior or the Caspian Sea. Today, let's consider these contenders for largest lake and decide which lake most deserves the title. Welcome to Two Lambda Plus Black. I am Heirua. Let's first address an elephant in the room. Why is the Caspian Sea considered a lake? when its name is the Caspian Sea. You may have heard someone say the Caspian Sea is not only a sea but geographically a lake. And indeed, a usual definition of a lake is that it is an area of water surrounded by land. Contrary to what some believe, there is no requirement that such a mass of water is freshwater for it to be a lake. And keep in mind, if you disqualify bodies of water with non-trivial salinity from being lakes, you disqualify not just the Caspian Sea, but also Lake Van, Lake Balkash, Mono Lake, and the Great Salt Lake. So the Caspian Sea is a body of water completely surrounded by a substantially larger landmass, and is four and a half times as large as Lake Superior. So that settles it, right? The Caspian Sea is the largest lake, while Lake Superior gets to take home the consolation prize of being the largest freshwater lake. Not quite, because the Caspian Sea is actually an ocean. The bottom of the Caspian Sea is basalt, characteristic of oceanic crust, and unlike the granitic continental crust that lies beneath lakes. And that's because, from geologic history, the Caspian Sea, like the Black Sea, is a remnant of the former and much larger Paratethys Sea, an arm of the world ocean. And the Caspian Sea still retains the oceanic characteristics of the Paratethys, despite having shrunk substantially. Even though the definition of a lake is that it's an area of water surrounded by land, I think it's quite clear if it got large enough and acquired the characteristics of an ocean, we wouldn't be calling it a lake, and would be calling it an ocean. So, since there's an implicit arbitrary cutoff for size in the definition of a lake, but an ocean can be defined by concrete characteristics, like the nature of the crust underneath, and the Caspian Sea exhibits these characteristics, the Caspian Sea should be disqualified from the lake category, not because it's really a sea, but because it's really an ocean. Given this, one might believe that Lake Superior is the largest lake. But I'm now going to contend that that's not the case. Lake Superior has the largest area on its surface of any lake in the world, but lakes are three-dimensional objects. The measure of the size of a three-dimensional object should be volume, not surface area. Though, when we talk about the surface area of a lake, we're not even talking about the same thing as how surface area is defined in mathematics. In any case, you wouldn't measure the size of a fridge by its area on one face, so why should you do so with a lake? Historically, measuring a lake's size by its area was understandable as a result of the fact that for quite a while we didn't have the technology to know how large the lake is in the third dimension. But now we do know the shape of the bottoms of lakes, so we ought to be measuring three-dimensional lakes by their volume. And by volume, the largest lake in the world is Lake Baikal in eastern Russia. By area, it's substantially smaller than Superior, but it is much deeper. In fact, it's the deepest lake in the world. Under this metric, Superior would be the third largest lake in the world, where the second would be Lake Tanganyika. And in case you're a big fan of the Caspian Sea, and our salty dye disqualified it, I'll just mention here that it would be the largest lake by volume if it qualified. Let's consider the Great Lakes under this new definition to practice thinking with size based on volume. Under the area definition, Lake Ontario is the smallest of the Great Lakes, but under the volume definition, Lake Erie is much smaller, and is the only of the Great Lakes whose bottom is above sea level. Lake Ontario, in fact, reaches the second furthest down of the five lakes, though it does get a nice sweet Niagara Falls of downwards advantage. Incidentally, there is no surface break between Lakes Michigan and Huron. The pinch point between them is 8 kilometers wide and over 30 meters deep. That's no river, and it's certainly not small enough to prevent Michigan and Huron from having the same level surface or to prevent water from flowing from Lake Huron to Lake Michigan under the right winds they should be considered the same body of water. And even though the volume of Lake Michigan plus the volume of Lake Huron is less than the volume of Lake Superior, the surface area of Lake Michigan plus the surface area of Lake Huron is greater than the surface area of Lake Superior. So even if you believe that surface area should be the metric by which a lake's size is evaluated, you should consider Lake Michigan-Huron the largest lake rather than Lake Superior. So, all in all, 
what should be considered the largest lake in the world, not the Caspian Sea and not Lake Superior, but Lake Baikal, until Baikal rifts enough to become an ocean. Thanks to my patrons for helping make this video happen. If you wish to join them, the link to my Patreon is in the description. See you next time, and as always, remember to love the night.